Let me now turn to a subject that continues to dominate Twitter, if not mainstream media. Superconductors, and to be more specific, room temperature superconductors. I'm going to start with a major health warning on this story. There is a very good reason why this subject is not getting too much attention in the mainstream media. And that's because it is still not clear that the so-called breakthroughs in this field are actually correct. There have been multiple claims in the past of people saying they've discovered this holy grail, but they've always been wrong so far. And to be honest, it may well be the case again. In fact, it probably is the case again. Why then am I talking about it to you? It's because this is such a potentially significant development that even if there is a 10% chance that it is correct, then you need to pay attention. So, let me recap what is happening, but once again with that crucial health warning. All of these claims could be wrong. It could all just be a damn squib. But let me go into what room temperature superconductors are. First, the history. It was back in 1911 that we first discovered superconductors. Now, superconductors essentially are materials that can conduct electricity without any resistance. Why is that important? Because such a material is infinitely energy efficient. And it also has important magnetic properties that we can talk about separately. In essence, there is no wastage of electricity being dissipated in heat or light. It's very, very efficient. The implications of that are staggering. Think about what it means for electricity wastage. But that's only a start. Quantum computing, levitating trains, MRIs, nuclear fusion, efficient battery storage. All of this becomes easy and possible with superconductors. But so far, superconductivity has only happened under very, very restricted conditions, under freezing temperatures, 250 degrees below uh, Celsius, or at a very high pressure. And that means that superconductors have very limited practical significance. A room temperature superconductor, if it is found, is bound to be a Nobel Prize winning discovery because it would be undoubtedly one of the biggest scientific achievements of all time. Much like artificial intelligence, you could sit down and argue as to which is bigger and, and more significant. So that brings us to what happened on the 22nd of July. On the 22nd of July, Suk Bai Lee and Ji Hoon Kim of South Korea's Quantum Energy Research Center posted two papers. In them, these researchers claim to have discovered the ultimate room temperature superconductor. How? Well, essentially, by seasoning with copper, a material made out of common elements. We're talking about lead, oxygen, and phosphorus. Plentiful elements. They're everywhere. And they are so cheap. These South Korean researchers claim that the end product, LK99, can superconduct electricity in not just room temperatures, but also in temperatures higher than 100 degrees Celsius. Frankly, scientists elsewhere are not convinced. Well, not yet anyway. They have multiple objections. Some of them are saying lead appetite to begin with is a non-conducting mineral. So how exactly is it being used to create a superconductor? And they are many, many other points of contention. Uh, many of them are extremely technical, so I'm not going to vary you with them right now. But what you should know is that the claims of this discovery are being met with more skepticism and less celebration because similar claims have been made way too many times in the past. None of these claims have ever been able to pass scientific scrutiny. So are the latest claims premature? Or are researchers just looking for a day in the sun? Now, it's hard to say at this time. What we can say, though, is that so far, superconductivity has only been possible at very low temperatures. We're talking about minus 250 degrees Celsius. Mercury, for example, was the first material to show some superconductive properties. Then you had lead, you had niobium, you had niobium nitride. Uh, today, tin and aluminium, too, are sometimes being talked about and used as superconductors. But all of them work either in super low temperatures or at increased pressure conditions. 
this new material, LK99, could potentially be synthesized for a fistful of dollars. And that explains the interest. So let me try and sum up what actually is happening as we speak at the present moment. The crucial word you need to track online is replication. With any scientific discovery like this, the crucial test is whether other scientists can replicate your findings. Those results are now coming in thick and fast. Many other labs are trying to do this. Hey, this is not complicated. Look at those elements I talked to you. You can try to replicate those findings in a lab. And a lot of people are trying to do this. Now, those replication tests are up there online. You can track them in real time on Twitter or, frankly, even on the LK99 Wikipedia page. So far, some preliminary results are there from three labs in China and one in India. The findings right now are not exactly clear-cut. Frankly, that's also interesting. The findings are not 100% clear-cut. I've asked a bunch of people in the scientific community and other people who are trying to analyze this. The betting odds, if you had to say that, the majority of people are saying probably a damn squib. Uh, if this is happening, it's, there's only about 10% of people out there saying it could actually be for real. But as I said, with a discovery of this magnitude, even a 10% chance means you should pay attention. And we're going to keep on telling you about the story. If it turns out to be a damn squib, we'll tell you. And if it turns out to be a eureka moment, I assure you, you will hear about it. It'll be banner headlines everywhere.